Here I have a completed selection, but when we zoom in, there's a problem. The closer we get, the worse these edges appear, and you can see how there's just this pixelated, blocky, messy looking edge. What we want is that crisp, clean edge all the way around our selection, and there's three simple sliders that you can use to create that. In this case, I had just created this selection using the select subject button within the contextual taskbar, or you can find it nested within the options bar while any of your W shortcut tools are selected. If you're totally unfamiliar with selections, I'll leave some resources in the description to help you with that after this video. But assuming that you removed your background via a layer mask, that means we can use the select and mask workspace to refine all of these edges without having to do manual brush adjustments or redoing the selection entirely. So to access Select and Mask, just double click on your layer mask thumbnail here. This will bring up the Select and Mask workspace. And for the view mode, I just have it set to on white at 100% intensity. But the sliders that we're looking for are these ones right here within Global Refinements. We have Smooth, Feather, and Contrast. Now these three together do an amazing job to fix these messy edges that we see here. So let's begin with the smooth slider. If I go and increase this smooth slider to a huge amount like this, it's going to take all of those edges and basically find the average of them. So then that way they don't have as much variation. This can work pretty well at a high value if you have a simple edge, but if you have a lot of details and variances in your edge, it's just going to smooth over all of those little details. So you'll want to use this setting sparingly. I'm just going to bring this down just to a point where the blockiness is pretty much gone, but it's not maxed out on the smoothing intensity. Something like this looks pretty good to me. I'll look around the entire object here and that looks relatively good to me. Next, we'll go to our feather slider, which is going to further remove any imperfections. The feather will basically just add a blur to the edge of your selection, which will also make any leftover imperfections after the smooth slider less visible. So adjust your feather slider until it is relatively blurred around the entire selection, but you can still clearly make out the edge. But with that applied, we obviously don't want a blurry edge to our selection, so that's where the contrast slider is going to come in. This slider is going to counter the feather adjustment, basically bringing our edge somewhere in between the outer and inner edge of our feather. So if I increase the contrast slider like this, you'll notice how much sharper those edges become. And again, it's basically closing the gap on our feather so that we have extended the edge slightly with our feather to smooth things. And then we're making it sharp again by adding contrast. So with these three sliders, we're able to remove those imperfections that we started with. Then we can go and further smooth the edges using our feather slider because we're adding some blur to remove further imperfections. And then we can bring back the sharpness of the edge using the contrast slider, which is going to bring our selection edge to an average of our feather. Our result ends up being this here, that if I look at the before and then the after, you can see how much better that looks with almost no work at all. But although we've come a long way already, we still have one really useful thing to do to make this look more realistic, because currently we have a sharp edge against a clearly blurry object. So we can update this to make that edge look more realistic with that depth of field. Before we add that adjustment though, we need to save our changes from the selected mask workspace. So I'll go down to the output setting and set this to new layer with layer mask, or if you don't want to create a new layer, just choose layer mask here. It's up to you. But I'm going to choose new layer with layer mask, click OK. And then this will create a new layer with the updated mask here with all of our changes. I'll rename this to selected mask. Now to fix this problem of the hard edges near the blurry parts of our object, we can just add a Gaussian blur, but we want to use it selectively only in the areas of our object that are actually blurry. So to make this really easy, I'll just first right click on my selected mask layer and go to convert to smart object. Therefore, we can now apply smart filters, which you'll see why that matters in a second. And with that layer selected, we'll go and apply our filter by going to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. We'll go and choose a radius that makes sense for the edge blur that we want within our photo. I'll choose something around five pixels and I'll click OK. But of course, I don't want the entire photo to be blurred. So that is why the smart filter layer mask comes into play. 
This would not be applied if we did not convert our image into a smart object beforehand. But with this layer mask, we can click on it and press Command or Control I to invert it, making it black and therefore invisible. So any effects that we have here, which is the Gaussian blur, is no longer visible on this layer. However, we can now use the layer mask to paint white, aka visibility, back into view around the edges that we want the Gaussian blur to appear. So accessing the brush tool by pressing B, I'll choose the soft round brush, opacity and flow at 100%, and setting my foreground color to white, making sure the smart filter layer mask is selected, we can now just go and paint over any edges that we think should be blurred. If the edge looks too blurry to you, we can always go up to the opacity for your brush, bring this down to say like 30%, and now you'll be painting a 30% intensity of blur around the edges that you paint. And you can paint multiple times to add more intensity to that blur. So just take a moment to go around any of the edges that should have blur within your project. I'll meet you when all of this is complete. With that Gaussian blur manually painted in only around the edges that should have a blur, you can see how much more realistic this looks, turning that on and off to see the results here. I'll zoom in a bit closer so you can see what's going on a bit more, where there's this really blurry bit of the photo, we now have a blurry edge to match, so it just looks a little bit more realistic wherever we go and use this cutout. Now to take a look at our before and after side by side, we have our before over here on the left. You can see the very chunky edges that we have after our automatic selections here. But then comparing that now to the smoothed edge with the blur added in, you can see how much more professional and realistic this cutout looks in comparison to the original, especially when we look up close. This looks way more realistic and is going to make your projects look a lot better too. Now there are endless little tricks like this inside of Photoshop that can make a seemingly simple process that much better, and I understand if it gets overwhelming with all of the things that you need to remember. That's why I created the Photoshop Pro ebook that is totally free and available in the description below if you want to grab a copy of that. It gives you a step-by-step -step blueprint to follow in Photoshop so that you can feel more confident when you're working on your next project. Now the sliders that we talked about here can work for any cutout that you're working with in Photoshop but depending on how complex the edges are, you might have to do multiple passes of the Select and Mask workspace. I didn't explain how that works in this video, but if you want to learn more about Select and Mask and some advanced ways of using it, then make sure to check out this video next so you can master the Select and Mask workspace along with edge refinements in complex selections.